A woman in the UK was arrested for standing silently and praying inside her head outside an abortion clinic. No, I'm not joking. Before I ask you any questions about what's going on today, I have to caution you, which is just your rights, which is you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something that you later on in court, anything you do said may be given you. Uh, what, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Oh, you may. Have you got a licence for that standing? Okay. Why, why here of all places? I know you, you don't live but this is an abortion something. Okay, that's why you're standing. Is, is you standing here part of the protest? No, I'm not are you, protesting. Are you, are you praying? I, I might be praying in my head. Praying inside her head? That's a thought crime. Chuck her in the van. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you once more, will you voluntarily come with us now to the police station for me to ask you some questions about today and other days where there are allegations that you've broken public spaces? I mean, he's got a point. People keep banging on about record crime in England and Wales. About unsolved cases, burglaries not even being responded to. But surely the police should be more concerned with the threat posed by women standing on street corners praying silently inside their heads. Uh, if I've got a choice, then no. Okay, well then, you're under arrest. I can't suspicion of failing to comply with the Public Spaces Protection Order, which is under the Antisocial behaviour crime of policing act 2014. Antisocial behaviour. The kind of antisocial behaviour that involves just standing there and not bothering anyone. Now, of course, you again, you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later on in court, anything you do say may be given Do you understand the caution? I do, yes. Um, your arrest is necessary in order for the prompt and effective investigation into the offence. What that means is so that I can ask you some questions. Uh, vulnerable people, mainly service users in the clinic. Yeah, they're so vulnerable to the vicious danger posed by this £90 woman saying prayers in her head. Okay, um, so you'll accompany us out to the police station, uh, you get booked in front of a custody sergeant, and then if you want a solicitor, you can assist her on the limit. Okay, um, I don't tend to handcuff you, but obviously my, my colleague will search you because you're going to get into the police car, make sure you don't have anything to harm us or you can just Okay. Well, maybe maybe if I could give a bit of a background to this. So for 20 years or around that, I've been going outside abortion centres and praying there and offering help to women. I know, you know well over 100 women who've accepted our help and um, continued their pregnancies. Um, but September this year, the local council in Birmingham brought in this censorship zone, this PSPO, um, formerly these were used for, for dog fouling and drunken behaviour and things like that, but they're now popping up around the country um, surrounding abortion centres and they ban behaviour like protesting, um, but it also names prayer and counselling as forms of protesting. And so four times I went and stood near the closed abortion centre and silently prayed there. And as you can see, the police came and asked me if I was protesting which I wasn't. They asked me if I was praying, and I said I might be silently praying. Um, I was arrested, I was searched, I was locked in a cell, I was then interviewed or interrogated, however you'd like to see it, um, during which I was quizzed about what I was praying about. Um, I was then released on bail and then subsequently charged on four counts of protesting and engaging in an act intimidating of service users um, so I now stand on, on trial on February the 2nd, supported by ADF UK, um, really for, for freedom of thought. Um, and, and the concern is here in England that um, national buffer zones are now being discussed. So there's a possibility of every abortion centre in this country having a similar zone around it. Um, and obviously the implications of that are, are really concerning. If you're arresting people for praying, you are committing an act of evil. It's not a close call at all. There's sort of no debate about that. And I would think that even secular people would recognize that. Did anybody, any prominent person, step forward to defend you? Um, I, I have had a lot of um, people who say they're pro-choice or that they support abortion, but they've also got concerns about this. And, and that in itself is, is very encouraging to hear. Um, that it's not necessarily about people who support abortion or don't support abortion. This is more to do with freedom of thought here. Um, it's even gone further than freedom of prayer. I mean, we, we all talk about the, the cancel culture and the concerns we have about people being cancelled um, 
you know, speaking and, and public, um, maybe public speaking engagements, but to be arresting somebody for what they're thinking, it's just gone even a step further. It's, it's just, it's actually quite surreal. That's the word I'd use to describe it. I mean, the amount of people who've used the word Orwellian to me to describe this, likening it to the 1984 novel. Um, and, and it's really seemed like that to me from start to finish. And I wish it's not over yet, but it's just quite a surreal experience. Well, it's evil. It's an act of evil. Arresting someone for praying is an act of evil, period. And it just breaks your heart to think of all the people in charge of prime minister on down who are standing by and allowing this to happen. And it, um, I'm, I'm just so glad that you did this. I hope you'll continue to do it. That's a human right. They can't take it away from you. And I appreciate your telling us about it on this show. Isabel Vaughn Spruce, thank you.